Refeeding syndrome sounds like something made up, but it's actually real. And it happens after you break a fast. Pretty much if you're breaking a fast, I guess incorrectly, you're not paying attention to certain things. And then all of a sudden you start wearing Teva sandals, you wear cargo shorts, and never mind, that's just what I do. It's actually a pretty serious thing what ends up happening and it's something that you need to be paying attention to. Now, most of the data looks at this in terms of like longer fasts, but there's still practical application even with shorter fasts and things that we should be paying attention to. And it tells us a lot about what's going on in terms of sort of ion and mineral regulation within our body during a fast, right? So when we are fasting, obviously we're not consuming food. So when that happens, our body needs to compensate for overall like ions, like mineral, in this case, we're talking like potassium, phosphorus, we're talking calcium to some degree, sodium. Okay, we need to have stable blood levels of these ions. It's a very important thing. And normally we're getting it from the diet. So what's happening is these blood levels remain stable and the cell levels of these ions remains stable, okay? So when we're fasting or we're not eating and our blood levels of these ions start to slowly drop, what ends up happening is the body compensates and it says, okay, well, we're gonna take some of these ions that are in a cell and we're gonna allow them to go into the bloodstream. So then the blood levels remain stable. The body's pretty fascinating. Like during a fast, even a longer fast, the blood levels of a given mineral or ion will stay nice and stable because it is required for our body to function well, okay? Now, on the contrary, the cellular levels of these ions end up getting depleted, okay? Because they are sacrificing their ion load to put it in the blood. So now what happens is you have this stark difference in concentration in terms of ions. You have a bunch of ion concentration in the blood and very little in the cell. This does not pose much of an issue I mean, it will pose an issue if you're like working out and you need that stuff, you need the ions, you need that concentration, you need that gradient to move and all that. But generally speaking, it's not gonna play a huge role until you break a fast, okay? So when you break your fast, hypothetically, if you're breaking it with a carbohydrate, what's gonna happen is you're going to have an insulin spike to accommodate the carbohydrate, okay? You have a spike in insulin to accommodate and allow that glucose to come into a cell. What insulin does is it opens a little gate, okay? It opens a gate in the cell so that it can trigger something called GLUT4 translocation. It triggers the, uh, little the little transporter inside a cell to come to the membrane of the cell and take glucose in. So it's an insulin dependent transporter. So it's a very cool thing, very good thing. But when we have this high concentration of ions in the blood and a low concentration of ions in the cell, we have what is called a gradient. And it's in physics where if you have a high concentration and a low concentration, once a doorway is opened, they're going to flood to try to match. But what ends up happening in this particular case after a longer fast is you have ions that are concentrated in the blood rush into the cell to accommodate that, and all of a sudden you're left with lower levels of blood ions, which is almost worse. In fact, it is worse, okay? That can be dangerous. Again, that's with a longer fast, but at a shorter fast level, this can still pose a potential issue because in order to be our optimal self, we wanna have stabilized and like kind of nice concentrations that are matched so that our body can function and we can have nerve firing and have these things work the way they're supposed to work. This is one of the reasons why it is important to maintain some level of electrolyte balance during a fast. I'm not saying it's going to fix anything or be perfect fix. I'm not a doctor. That's not what I'm here to say. But if you are able to provide your body with electrolytes so that it doesn't have to borrow from the cell as much, then when you do break your fast, you put yourself into a more stable situation because then you're not having this massive difference in concentration. So before I break a fast and after I break a fast, I use Element. Element is my preferred electrolyte. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. It's like the trifecta of minerals that are so perfect when you are fasting. So the link down below is really cool because it gets you a special gift. Okay, when you use Element, when you buy Element, you get a free sample pack that has one of every single flavor. So this is perfect for you or if you want to give some to a friend that hasn't tried it yet and they want to try a different flavor. Like personally, I love the watermelon salt. I love the lemon lime. I love the mango chili, but 
my wife, she really likes the lemon habanero, she likes the spicy one, she likes the raspberry, she likes the orange, so we have our favorites. So sometimes you wanna give a sample pack to someone so they can try it out for themselves. But this is cool because it's not just for new customers, it's for returning customers as well. So that link down below is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas, and that's gonna get you that free gift along with your purchase. Again, it's gonna change how you fast. Finally, you're able to sip on something while you fast. It isn't breaking your fast, but it's also doing you more good than harm. So check them out, use that link down below in the description. So the real problem here we run into is less about, I guess, what's happening during the fast and more about what happens when we break the fast, right? So then like, what if we break our fast with something that doesn't have uh, carbohydrates in it, like with just protein? Okay, well, there's still a little bit of an insulin spike, but it's a little bit different, okay? Because when you spike your insulin with protein, you have an equally matched spike in glucagon. Okay, think about it like this. You need your insulin to spike when you consume protein because it is required for uh, the cell to open up to get that protein in. Otherwise, you just have high levels of you know, circulating protein and you would run into all these issues, right? So you have to have that happen too. But what we don't want to have happen is a subsequent drop in glucose and other things that occur. So what happens here is glucagon also increases and glucagon helps liberate some of the glucose into the bloodstream to keep levels stable there. So think about it like this. Insulin allows the glucose into the cell. Okay, so if you had protein and you spike your insulin with protein, great, the protein gets to go into the cell, but now you've got this glucose that's floating through the bloodstream that's there just to keep you to survive, that would rush into the cell too and you'd go hypoglycemic. Your glucose would drop really low because you didn't eat glucose, but your cells are still taking what available glucose you do have since there was an insulin spike. That would be a problem. But that's why there is a subsequent increase in glucagon to protect that. So the glucagon increases and that makes it so that at the same time the gluc or the excuse me, the protein is able to come in and the glucose is coming in, you're kind of having a signal for glucose to stay stabilized, okay? So glucose is also kind of, I guess for lack of a better way of saying it, to make it simple, still kind of coming out of the cell too. So blood levels of glucose are stable. It's like the glucose way of handling the same problem we see with refeeding syndrome, right? We don't want this huge concentration shift. We don't want glucose to be in the bloodstream then all of a sudden drop because it's going into a cell. So the body can handle that. So when you have a little bit of an insulin spike from protein, yes, you can still run into the potential refeeding syndrome with the ion concentration, but not nearly to the degree that you would have with say, you know, carbohydrates, even a lower glycemic carbohydrate. So general rule of thumb, as I've talked about in other videos, break your fast with protein, and then 60 minutes later or so, maybe an hour and a half, that's when you're much better off to have your carbohydrates because you can allow that gradient to stabilize a little bit more. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.